Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, we are ready for the event. Good day, LA. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Michaela Pereira with Good Day LA. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the space station. It's good to be with you today. It is so good to be with you, Thomas, Megan. What an exciting time for us to be able to speak with you. We were just taking a look at some of the work you did just last week. We know every moment is accounted for up there in space. Each moment is so vital. Tell us what you've been busy with in terms of, of uh, assignments and research. Uh, we've uh, we've done a lot these last few weeks. Uh, we got we got busy with a couple spacewalks, uh, going out the space station, installing some uh, new solar arrays that are going to give us uh, uh, some badly needed power to make everything work inside. We have a lot of new facilities, and at the same time, what we were doing here, while we were doing this outside, um, the other crew members were taking care of the science inside the space station, working on plant growth um, and, and a lot of other experiments. So it was it was an, exci an exciting time uh, within the last few weeks, and uh, we know the pace is going to keep being the same for the for the rest of the mission. Megan, uh, you're in the coolest laboratory a scientist could ask for. Do you sometimes lose yourself in the science and almost forget where you are floating high above the Earth's surface? Actually, you can kind of never forget where you are because everything that you do is complicated a little bit by the fact that you are floating high above the Earth's surface. And so things that we would think are very easy on Earth, um, like sampling a surface, um, become very challenging because you have to figure out how to place your body and how to place all of your supplies. Uh, you'll notice we have Velcro on our pants and oftentimes we're, we're sticking the supplies for the investigation that we're doing right to our legs because there's not any surface to set them down on. So it's amazing to do, um, you know, I've, I've done four experiments, uh, worked on four different investigations already today, which is just an amazing thing. Uh, but you always know where you are when you're doing it. Part of science is the thrill of the academic discovery. Part of it is also about the practical application of those discoveries. I mean, look, you talk about the Velcro. Which is the part that gets you more excited, Thomas, the thrill of academic discovery or the practical application? I think what's really fantastic is we, we get kind of the, the best of both worlds. Some of the research we're working on is, is very theoretical. Uh, we look at the universe, we look at like deep philosophical questions almost. And then some of the things we're doing is, is technology oriented. This is techniques and technology that we're developing here on the space station for Earth. I'm um, thinking about metal alloys, for example. This is, this is stuff that's used every day. We, you know, whether you're building new cars, new planes, or new phones, this, you're going to need those materials. And, and, and we're, we're blazing the trail up here on the ISS. So, uh, so from the most theoretical to, to the, the most basic, the most mundane application, we got a bit of everything here on the space station. That's what makes it so special. Uh, yeah, I, in fact, Thomas, while you have the microphone, I hear there was some sort of a toilet milestone you said in space. You want to tell viewers what that was? <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I didn't get the question. Can you say that again? Oh, we, we, I mean, we'll just move on. Don't worry. Uh, let me ask you, though. I understood last week, Thomas, you made a crepe. Is that true? You were able to make a crepe for the rest of the, the members of the, of the space station? Were you cooking aboard? So Megan says, if I made a crepe, she didn't get any. But, so I like your version of the story, but the real version of the story is that I used a ready-made tortilla, which is kind of the, the, the basis of, of everything we do up here on Space Station. I smeared a bit of, of, uh, of chocolate paste on top of it and rehydrated uh, strawberries. And I called it a Parisian crepe, which, which was kind of a stretch. Uh, so I'm happy that at least you believed it, but, but really it was, a, it was the extent of my cuisine here on board the ISS. Uh, but I, I still have a couple months, and I'll, I'll try to do better than that. 
I think uh, the Frenchman can perfect a crepe in space. I believe it. Now, uh, one thing we do know, Megan, is that you're a proud Bruin, uh, and you had the chance to be part of the commencement uh, address to UCLA recently. Tell us how that experience was for you. Very, a really full circle moment, I imagine. It very much was. I was so honored to be invited by Dean Murthy to give the commencement address and very excited that it worked out for me to be able to do it from the International Space Station. And I very clearly remember sitting in the audience of my own uh, commencement ceremony many years ago as an aerospace engineering graduate, you know, dreaming one day of being here. So it was very meaningful for me to be able to participate in that way and to encourage the next generation of explorers as they're just setting out on their career paths. Absolutely. Look, the uh, the space station very much is a, a topic of discussion in your family. I understand your husband, Bob, uh, spent uh, months aboard the ISS last year as well. Uh, have your experiences, do you swap stories, do you swap experiences? One of the really nice things about having a spouse who has also, is also in this business, he lived here for two months last year, as you said, and we've both flown uh, shuttle missions and now Dragon missions, is that um, he understands, you know, the goods and the bads of, of doing this job, and it's, you know, he understands when um, things are maybe not going so well, and he also understands, you know, when things are going really well, and so it's nice to be able to share that with him, and actually we can talk about other things, because I don't have to explain to him what I'm doing, you know, on a daily basis, because he's done it for himself. So we talk about, mostly we talk about things that are going on at home, things that are going on with our family and with our son. Oh, I love that. Uh, Thomas, we saw that you tweeted out a selfie. Hopefully we can pull that up uh, from space during your spacewalk. You've done, um, I think, 33 hours of spacewalks in total. And I understand there was a little bit of a photo bomb. Yeah, it was actually it was kind of done on purpose. I knew that Shane was behind me, so I, I was trying to. It's actually really difficult to take a picture with those big pressurized gloves, it's like boxing gloves, pretty much. Uh, you don't know what you're shooting at, so it's kind of a blind, a blind shot. But I knew Shane was hanging out behind me, and I was trying to get a shot of both of us. And I was lucky enough. Actually, I took I took 25 shots, and one of them came out uh, pretty good. But but I like the I like the shot of having Shane in the background and, and me in the foreground because we really worked as a team. So it's a, it's a good memory of the spacewalks. We've done five spacewalks together. Uh, I think it doesn't happen very often that the same crew members go out five times together. So it happened to us with Shane. I'm happy to have a picture to remember it. Station, this is Houston ACR. Please stand by while we reconnect the client.
station. This is Houston ACR. The client is currently in a commercial break, and it will be back to you in one minute and 20 seconds. All right, welcome back to Good Day LA from Los Angeles and from outer space. We are talking with crew members aboard, Megan MacArthur and Thomas Pesquet aboard the International Space Station. Uh, so glad we were able to reestablish contact. And in fact, why don't you tell us about the third astronaut that's with you, or the penguin knot, Megan? Who is your little friend? So this is our friend Gwyn Gwyn. Uh, he came up with us on Dragon as our zero-G indicator, and it's a tradition, I believe, that we got from the cosmonauts, um, and their Soyuz vehicles would bring um, a small toy, um, and it starts to float once, you've, um, once your main engines have cut off. So we were able to bring, bring Gwyn Gwyn with us as part of a new tradition on Dragon that uh, was established by the, the Demo 2 crew, and uh, uh, my son and uh, Aki's son uh, chose, chose the representative to come along with us. And is Gwyn Gwyn always tethered to one of you as to make sure that Gwyn Gwyn doesn't just get lost in a part of the space station? Well, it's, that's a good point. So you can see that he's tethered to me now. He uh, usually uh, stays in one of our crew quarters, and we uh, will bring him out for special occasions so he can uh, have a look around. Uh, we taught him to fly recently, too, actually. <laughs> Hashtag learn to fly. Looks like he's doing just fine uh, aboard the space station. I understand you're expecting a delivery from Russia this weekend. Uh, talk about how deliveries come there, Thomas. It's not as easy as here on Earth when you get, say, an Amazon Prime shipment arrive at your house. No, I mean, the principle is a little bit the same. People bring you stuff, but, uh, but it's much more challenging, obviously. Uh, all, the, all the supplies have to be launched on a resupply ship. It's usually a cargo ship. There's different types. Uh, there's, a, there's a Russian Progress cargo that's, uh, like you said, uh, is, is about to come in dock to the space station. We just had a, uh, an American Cygnus vehicle. Um, and so that's how we resupply with everything we need, food, clothing, uh, oxygen, water when we need it, and also uh, science experiments and all the supplies we need to, to keep the station running and perform our mission and do our research. Um, so it's always fun to have a new vehicle coming up because sometimes there's surprises. Sometimes there'll be some uh, some presence, some attentions from our loved ones, uh, people we, we, we think about on Earth and think about us. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so we're, we're excited to have the new delivery coming up soon. And uh, it's a bit like Christmas. You're opening your, your Christmas presents. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. A giant care package from Earth. Uh, that's a beautiful thing. Uh, Megan, obviously, uh, this weekend is 4th of July. Uh, what kind of uh, ways will you celebrate 4th of July or, or at least honor the occasion uh, from the ISS? Well, there's three of us up here from the United States, along with our French crewmate and Japanese crewmate and our two uh, Russian crewmates. And so we will have a little bit of a barbecue this weekend. Of course, the food's all pre-made and pre-packaged, but we have some barbecued brisket and some hamburgers uh, without the buns, just the, just the hamburgers. And we'll do, you know, baked beans and cobbler and that kind of thing. So we're looking forward to sharing a little bit of those traditions with our crewmates. And we'll be looking for fireworks, too. We'll see what we can see. And I understand. Oh, and tell us about that. What, tell us about the experience of seeing fireworks from there. 
So actually, a, I've, we've never seen fireworks from space. You see, you see thunderstorms really well, though. So I guess a big firework you could probably see. But we have for big lenses, you, you need to look very closely. But but you see the, the what you see is really the show that Mother Nature, um, you know, puts puts together for you. So uh, thunderstorms and things like this are extremely spectacular when you see them from above. It's like it flashes in all directions. It's really like fireworks. Uh, so that's the closest I've seen on board the space station. But maybe who knows on the fourth of July if we look closely and we fly over, overhead the U.S., then, uh, then we'll definitely peek out in, uh, on the window and try to see something. <laughs> I love that. Well, before we wrap up, why don't each of you send a message to maybe some of your family or loved ones that could potentially be watching from Earth here or any of your countrymen that will be watching. You can even say it en français if you choose, Thomas, uh, and Megan as well. I'd love for you both to send a little message home because California is home for you, Megan. That's right. California is my home state, so I will definitely send a shout out to my family and friends in uh, the Golden State, both in Southern California and in Northern California. I love you guys. I miss you. Thanks for all the love and support. And uh, same here. Uh, it, it's good to be up here, but obviously we're far from our loved ones, so it's not always easy. We, we think about them, uh, the distance, you have to deal with it, uh, but we'll be reunited after the mission, and that's what, that's what matters. We're looking forward to this, and there's going to be good times after the mission. times after the mission. Oh, I just, I'm thrilled to bits to be able to speak with both of you. Uh, and Gwyn, Gwyn, thanks for cooperating. What I'm going to do now is get my phone ready for a selfie, and I'm going to come over here and do a selfie with both of you. So get ready and smile. There we go. There we go. A selfie from space. Uh, our thanks to Megan MacArthur, astronaut Megan MacArthur with NASA, and ESA astronaut Thomas Pesquet. Thank you so much. And Gwyn Gwyn, the special appearance from Gwyn Gwyn in outer space. This has been a delight and a real treat for us. Stay well. Happy Fourth of July. And we'll uh, hopefully get to talk to you when you're back here on Earth. Thank you so much. Merci. Station. This is Houston ACR. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants from Good Day LA Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.